On BBC Two in a minute, Woody Allen stars with Mia Farrow in Broadway, Danny Rose, continuing the season of films by the master of American comedy. Here on BBC One in 15 minutes, there's Match of the Day, with today's games between Manchester United and Everton and Tottenham and West Ham. That's after the news with Richard Whitmore at 18 minutes to 11. <laughs> The dollar tumbles and share prices slide and then the White House says it's time to stabilize the currency. A scramble for bargains as winter sales do record business. The battle for host, a Britain's eyewitness account of the Soviet push in Afghanistan. And bareheaded brick butting, a painful new sport for the 1988 Olympics. The White House said tonight it wants to stabilize the dollar after a day that's seen the currency under intense pressure in the world's money markets. It fell to a record low level in Tokyo, plunged against European currencies, and at one point lost three cents against the pound. In a statement tonight, the White House spokesman Marlin Fitzwater said, we feel strongly that any further decline or excessive fluctuation could be counterproductive. London markets are closed until tomorrow, but on Wall Street, the dollar's problems pulled down stock prices. Tonight, the Dow Jones index was down 56 points. It wasn't a black Monday here, but it was certainly a grey one. The index dropped 51 points in the first half hour, started down and stayed down. Losers outnumbered gainers 8 to 1 amid a general lack of investor confidence. And as for the sudden decline in the value of the dollar, the expert opinion in this New York brokerage house was that there's no obvious reason why it should continue. Now, given the fact that the dollar has come down a long way, and given that we may be at a turning point in fiscal policy and on the trade deficit, one could easily see how the foreign investor could be convinced that the dollar could stabilize. That's the administration's view as well. As Mr. Reagan began a West Coast holiday, his spokesman put out a statement saying any further decline in the dollar's value would be counterproductive. Asked to explain the day's events in the foreign exchange and stock markets, he said, we don't do psychoanalysis. But there's also a suspicion that Washington isn't striving too hard to protect its dollar. A further measured decline will help home industries close this country's enormous trade gap and make for prettier statistics in an election year. Martin Bell reporting. In London, our economics correspondent has been following the earlier effects of the dollar's decline today. Before all that, the Tokyo markets held sway right through Christmas, trading when the rest of the world's financial centres were off enjoying themselves, pushing share prices down on strictly Japanese concerns and having a go at the dollar for good measure. In Frankfurt today, the dollar was teetering below the 1 mark 60 level, which had seemed to be the rate that governments were defending in recent weeks. But Europe was only partly back to work, and again, a little action had a big effect. So is this the start of a new dollar collapse or is it simply a bit of holiday mischief magnified out of all proportion by the fact that trading is thin and many of the more experienced dealers are still at home enjoying themselves? The prophets of doom insist that if it is all down to speculators in a thin market then governments through their central banks could have used those same market conditions to push the dollar sharply upwards. Instead of that they seem to content themselves with limiting its fall. So, in many quarters of the market, there's still the suspicion that the top industrial countries are divided, however much they all say they want the dollar to stabilise. The markets won't be back in full working order until next week. Strong action from governments could knock the unruliness out of the markets before that, if they all act together. Despite problems in the world's financial markets, there's no sign that shoppers here are running out of cash. Following record spending before Christmas, crowds are now out in force for the winter sales. In Birmingham, congestion was so bad that the police had to ban all traffic from the city centre, as in most parts.